Hi, we're back again today and we're going to look at an off-center squared round this time. So what the um, difference here is, is, is the, the openings are not centered right on top of each other. So in this example here, I've just drawn a quick elevation view and we're flat on the one side. Okay, so the main difference or how, how things change really is in our plan view and then our true length diagram. And, and we're just going to incorporate a whole bunch more lines. We're not going to have duplicates anymore. So that becomes a bit of a challenge there, but really the process, the um, ability to do it is, is all exactly the same as an on center. Um, so let's have a look at the one we have here and we'll put some sizes to it. Let's call this uh, 12 by 12. We'll go with an eight inch top and let's say eight inches tall. So again, we got our uh, round size at the top. Let's put a collar on it again. Eight inches to 12 by 12 over an eight inch vertical height. So our true length diagram is gonna include our eight inches. Uh, it's also going to include any of the element lines that we establish inside here. Okay, and once we draw that out, uh, we'll see how many or the variations of lines that we get. So I've got my, uh, my square, my 12 by 12 drawn now. <clears throat> Notice how all my line work is extended past. I'm not, I'm not really too worried about that. I start with an X, Y. I measure six inches either way and then square all those lines up. Keep in mind, you're going to do those in construction lines. I can't do that on the board here, but keep those really, really light. Okay. And we'll go back afterwards and highlight those if we, if we're required to. You don't need to erase construction lines if they're done properly. Okay. But I'm just going to clear up some of mine just for uh, clarity for the video. So we got that one. So now, we want to work on that circle in the top part. And what we know is it's uh, eight inch diameter and it's flat. It's 90 degrees on this side here. And we could even have your shop drawing might have a little 90 there to show that it is truly square. But if it's not indicated, we can assume that it is. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to set my dividers and, and I have, have that set to the, to the radius. Now, because I don't know where the radius point necessarily is, it's not going to be on center here again. What I'm going to do is, is step from the outside where I know it's tangent or flush, and I'm going to tick off my radius point. That just establishes the exact distance away from that edge where I'm 90 so that I can swing the circle. Okay, <clears throat> so plan view drawn out. You can see I do have a line of symmetry and that's this one here, okay? So I still have one line. And like we, we've talked about before, we can have, uh, there's three ways, on center, off center in one direction or off center both ways. And this one is off center one way, okay? That still gives us a line of symmetry. That's the most common fitting that we're gonna see as far as a squared around uh, configuration. So plan view is drawn. My line of symmetry is here. So I want to choose my AB from that line of symmetry and parallel to a line parallel to that so that I know I'm going to end up as the seam on that line of symmetry. So I'm going to label this AB down here. And then I'll go CD up top here. Okay, and then that, that'll give me the mirror this way. I'll label the inside with my numbers. And then I'm going to draw in all my element lines. Okay, a couple things we want to point out here 
is one when we look at a square root around when when we look at the uh, specifically the elevation view, we see this outside edge here, and we know a cone that outside edge is a true length, and the same is true. Uh, for a squared round in the elevation view, the outside edges are true length. But if we imagine that up now in the plan view, imagine we're looking down and here's our, here's our uh, field of view, looking, at, looking down A towards D this way. When I look at that, I have those two, two different lines right on top of each other. And what they're doing is going from this corner to the top of the fit-in. Okay, so it's going from A, or this corner, this could, because this is both A and D, when we look at it in the elevation view. So if we tilt that up and imagine that we're looking through A and D, just have it end up as just a point here, a dot. We have A1, and we have D1, that both look like this outside edge. This is all we see in those views. Same with this side, we have, they're actually overlapping each other. They, we have C7 and we have B7, okay? We wanna make sure we keep those separated. If we're traveling from B to seven, that is not a true length in here, okay? You have to get to that line of symmetry or center so that that line doesn't have depth to it anymore. Line B7 in this case is leaning this way and it's leaning from the very outside to the very center of the fitting where C7 has no depth. It, there's no lean to it anymore. Okay? And we get that information from, from the view here or we'd get it from a profile if we're working from elevation view. But in this case, we want to <clears throat> recognize that there's two, there are two true lengths on the outside but there are two lines that duplicate each other right on that view there. Only one of them is true length. Another thing we want to look at is this point here. And this point where it's line C7 is just a point. There is no line in the plan view. Okay? And when we get a dot in the plan view, that is the indication that it's a true length in the elevation view that we have no depth. Okay, what that tells us is we're looking straight down on that line and it has no articulation either, either way. It's not leaning anywhere. It's directly straight up and down so that when we come to an elevation, we know that it's straight up and down. So we look for a dot in the plan view and that transfers to true length in the elevation view. Okay. So I think I got my plan view uh, finished. I'm all labeled. I got all my element lines uh, all drawn out. I got my seam, my half pattern. I'm going to build one, cut it out, trace it, and build the other one. So let me, let me scrub this off for some room. And we'll build our true length diagram next. So I have a vertical height of 8 inches. So here's my eight. And then I'm going to transfer all those element lines inside there. But like I said, this one, the, the, the process is no different. It's just more time consuming. There's more lines to actually establish a true length for. So let's start right here on the left hand side and go D1. Now this is also the case where you may find it getting a little bit congested in the true length diagram because we have so many lines now. So that's fine if it does. If you find it's getting too congested, just create another one. In some references you'll see that they have a true length diagram for every single line. So you wouldn't put, you wouldn't stack them inside like I'm doing. So you could build a whole, whole bunch of different triangles. Depends how much room you have and, and if you want to do that to keep it simple, but uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that for sure. But I'm just going to go ahead and work with what I have here. And if it, if it ends up getting too full, 
will create another one. Okay, that's our true length diagram finished up now. Got everything in there. The only one I didn't bring in is the dot, C7. Now, if I put a dot, it's got no length in the plan view. So if I put a dot, no length here, and zero compared to eight inches as vertical height is just eight inches. So that tells us again that the true length we could have gotten from the elevation view. Okay, so we're ready to construct our pattern now. So I'm gonna bring in and draw my baseline. And let's do it up here. Okay, so there's my baseline. Now, with a squared around uh, or with any fitting, we want to, you can see the way I've labeled it. And if we, if we imagine the outside edges, the, my element lines, from here, that's the outside of the part. So if I labeled AB the way we see it here, I would lay it out as the outside. And we always want our layout to be on the inside. So imagine our, our mirror image coming up top here, then that one would be reversed as AB here. But this one, if I want to, if, imagine that I'm standing inside here, right? And I'm inside the fitting, I want to see the inside. And I'm looking at it from this way. Okay, so I'm standing inside looking through. The B is on my right hand side now from the inside and the A is on my left. So that's the way I'm gonna start is looking from the inside of the fitting. So all my line work is on the inside. Okay, so I stand inside, I look down at it. So I'm looking, looking through and my B is on my left hand side. Okay, so I'm gonna do the B over here and the A here. Okay, so we always want to work the inside. And now we're ready to construct uh, point four. So again, our first triangle, AB4. So A4, pick up true length, swing it from A. Now this one's, it's off center, so it's not necessarily gonna be an arc right on center here where we actually have an intersection point and B4 is here I'm going to get my true length there so take your time just have some patience and and that will transfer into accuracy and there we go there's point four there so let's label that four and let's just clean that arc up a little bit because I overshot it again, you'll be in construction lines. You, there's no need to erase. Okay, and one way or the other, we can't work it symmetrically anymore. So we're going to have to work the, all of one side and then come back and work all of the other side. So let's work. Uh, I'm going to work the side B first. So B five. Okay, I'll swing that arc. Grab a step off. Swing that. I'm just going to hit the step off the other side as well. And I'm going to hit it off this side too. Seems how I'm here. But that won't attach to that one. Okay, so there's, there's five. True length B6. There we go, off center, squared around. 90 degrees in each corner, that's our checkpoint. 
a nice smooth arc, even though it's off center, we're still going to have a smooth arc. It might wave slightly. We might end up with a line that's curved or double curved, but it's going to be smooth. Okay. We're not going to see like a big lump in it, some, something like that. That is an indication we're wrong. Okay. So nice and smooth squares in the corners, half pattern, cut it out, trace it, create this, the second half. This is the inside. I always like to mark my and label it that that's the inside, but you can see from your, your scratches and line work that that's the inside. Okay, off center squared around.